Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you and welcome to Islam and Life with me, Tariq Ramadan, broadcasting from London. In today's show, we ask the question, what is the state of Muslims in Australia? Muslim communities are fairly new in Australia, a country where it has a racist reputation towards its Aborigine population. And today, we see a lot of religious hatred towards Muslims especially after 9-11. Australia also wants to follow France in banning religious dress codes. Islam and Life will investigate what is the state of Muslims in Australia. Australia is a very interesting example, in fact, because it's as if the, the, the Muslim community is a new community compared to other Western countries, for example, in Europe with the British uh, situation or the French situation, or even in the States or in Canada, where we have immigrant societies. Still, the, the discussion in, in Australia, it's, it's important, because what we heard recently over the last few months is signs that uh, it might be that the Australian politics is following in the footsteps of the European with this discussion about the dress code, about the burqa, about the, the hijab and people, the far right parties or the populist parties also instrumentalizing the fear of Islam uh, in Australia and trying to push the Muslims into a, a, a situation of uh, defensiveness. So is this uh, the reality of what is happening in, uh, in Australia? What is really happening within the Muslim communities and also among the young uh, uh, Australian Muslims? Because this is also something which is quite interesting the vision that we have for the young generation, which kind of perception do they have of their society and what is the way forward uh, in Australia? Is it going to be the same as in European countries or uh, in the States or in Canada or is, this, is there something quite specific there? So these are interesting questions and the Australian case is in itself quite interesting. So to answer all these questions, I am joined by Sheikh Shadi Suleiman, an Iman and a prominent speaker uh, and leader from Australia. Australia. Thank you so much for being with us uh, uh, today. Um, over the last few months and even years, we heard coming from Australia was, you know, populist parties and sometimes quite close to far right parties taking over uh, the political discussion and especially about, you know, immigrants and connecting immigrants with Muslims, which in fact is not the case. You yourself, you were born and raised uh, in Australia. You are Australian by nationality, but also this is your culture. This is uh, who you are. And you are a sheikh uh, uh, trained in Islamic sciences. So what is the state of affairs? Let us first start with sim simple facts and figures. How many Muslims? Where do they come from? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Thank you for having us. Uh, with Australia, Australia is a bit different than the European countries. Australia is a Western country in the East, mm -hmm. and it's surrounded by many Muslim countries. So, Australia, this is the geographical situation of Australia. Secondly, the Muslims in Australia have been there for a very long time. But as a huge population of Muslims in Australia, it's only been there for the last 40 to 50 years. When the British, when the British uh, people discovered Australia about 250 years or less. They brought with them a lot of Afghanis from Afghanistan, where Afghanistan was a British colony at that time, in the early 1800s. So the Muslims had a presence and existence in Australia within uh, over 150 years ago. To this day, we have mosques in Australia, to this day standing, and still uh, prayers established in them that are more than 120 years old, mm -hmm. and more than 130 years old. I've been to so many mosques built in 1890 and mosques built in 1901, 1905. But what happened as the presence of the Muslims in Australia as a huge uh, population existed in the early 60s 
and at the beginning of the 70s with the immigration with the immigration or the migration of many Muslims start to come from the Muslim world. So, so this is a very important point because once again this is something which is comparable to many European countries that the Muslim presence in fact in fact is a very old presence with masks with with intellectuals with something which was a presence uh, within the society but the number and and what happened after the immigration process after the Second World War for example and with the need of Australia that the, the number and the community the Muslim communities just uh, increase and, 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 and it's now a big one so this is something which is uh, comparable the point is that the great majority and as you said at the beginning it's quite something which is important that Australia is close to Indonesia is close to Asian countries Muslim majority countries where you have people coming in in, Aust in Australia and settling down so so the great majority of the Muslims uh, in Australia because what I heard when I was there is that lots of Lebanese Muslims lots of Turkish Muslims so can you tell us about what is the, the landscape how, how where where do they come from mainly yeah as I mentioned like as a population started in the hmm. early 60s and 70s I read that in the early 60s that uh, the Muslim population was less than 25,000 Okay. Now, alhamdulillah, 2010, there's over 800,000. Now, by the national census, they say 460. Hmm. But we know that's always, you know, they always lower the number of the Muslim uh, numbers uh, down. But the reality is we know as a Muslim community, <coughs> we're over 800,000. And the Muslim community grows dramatically. Hmm. And it is the fastest growing community in Australia. For many reasons, we don't have to get into them. Now, the most ethnical background of the Muslim community are Lebanese mm -hmm. and that's due to the war in Lebanon that took place in the okay, 70s so a lot of immigrants came we have a lot of Turks and we have a lot of Arabs from different ethnical backgrounds we have a lot of Bosnians we have a lot of Asians we have a lot of Africans we have a lot of Indians and Pakistanis in Australia when we say the word Asian we mean Chinese yes in the UK they mean uh, Indian and Pakistani mm -hmm. and we have a lot of Indonesians and Malaysians yes. in a matter of fact the native people of Australia the Aborigines their first encounter wasn't with the British people mm -hmm. their first encounter was with the Muslim sailors that came from Indonesia okay. in the mm -hmm. early 1600s mm -hmm. so the fact is it wasn't the British people who first stepped into Australia it was the, it was the Muslims mm -hmm. and that's why till now you find a lot of the Aborigines those who know the inheritance speak about the encounter of their ancestors with many of the Muslim sailors. To this day there mm. are so many islands that belong to Australia, More, about 80% of it are Muslims from Indonesia and Malaysia. Mm. So this is an advantage that Australia has. The other thing is Australian neighbours are mostly Muslims, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, mm. not like the other European countries which most of its neighbours are non-Muslims. So mm. Australia really cares and worries about its relationship with its neighbors, mm -hmm. especially like a neighboring country like Indonesia with 220 million Muslims, mm -hmm. that's something for it to really take in full consideration. Yes, th this is a very important point. Add to this that uh, we were speaking about the Aboriginal uh, uh, native people. And, and, and when, I I, when I was there, I met the, some of them and the, some of the leaders, and they wanted to be in touch much more with the Muslims, saying what we experienced through our own history with the fact that we, know we were marginalized and sometimes targeted is something that we can see now with Muslims. And in fact, it re reminded me with what I heard from African American in the state saying exactly the same that the, the, you know with the nat native people we have there is a process here that we have to study and sometimes we have to come with comparative studies here you, you didn't speak about the, the, the converts in, in Australia do we have lots of converts Alhamdulillah. Yeah. one of the things that Alhamdulillah now that you find there is an uh, Islamic awakening amongst the Muslims and especially the new generation who grew up there born there you know bred there educated there like myself it's mm. a lot more easier for us to integrate and understand the wider community than the older generation that came from overseas. Mm. Because of that, alhamdulillah, you find a large number of uh, non-Muslims uh, non embracing Islam. Like mm. in my center alone, we get average between two to three every week, alhamdulillah. Okay. So mm. this is uh, you know, a large number of uh, non-Muslims embracing Islam due to the fact of the interaction with Where's many the Muslims. Muslims?